Hey guys, it's Olivia and I'm back with another video. So I know a lot of my viewers are American, so you probably don't know what's going on around Ontario, Canada at the moment, but I am from Ontario, Canada, and this is something that isn't currently affecting me, but has affected me in the past and will probably affect me in the future, so I want to talk about it. But before we get into the video, be sure to subscribe to my channel because I make new videos every Monday. I make anywhere from brand videos like this to pop socket videos to how to make money online videos, and with all that being said, let's get into this video week's video. So what are we talking about? We are talking about the teachers striking. So they're going on a series of one day strikes because they're fighting for this, that, and the other. But in this video, we're going to specifically talk about smaller class sizes. And so teachers are fighting for smaller class sizes because they're saying that they can't get to every student like some students need more help than others but they're not able to give them the time that they need in order to learn it because they have 30 kids to focus on so they want to reduce class sizes so that they can teach better and teach in a more intimate space and help everybody get the grades that they know they can get right that sounds like a great thing and it is except for the approach that they're taking to get that so let me give you a little bit of background information. As I said, this strike situation has affected me in the past. So I have been a part of three strikes. I was a part of a strike in grade eight where school was still in session, but all extracurriculars were canceled. And I was a part of a strike in grade 10 where school was canceled for five and a half weeks. And I was a part of a strike in my first year of university where school was canceled for four months from March to July. And as somebody coming from the student perspective, not the teacher's perspective, you going on strike is not helping your students. You're saying, oh, I'm going to go on strike because I'm going to help my students. I'm going to win this strike. I'm going to get smaller class sizes and I'm going to help all my students to do better in the future because they're actually going to learn the material because I'm going to be able to spend more time with them. That's not what you're doing and here's why. All three strikes that I happened to be a part of, like as a student, they lost. They lost all three of them, okay? And I'm sorry, teachers, but I can almost predict, like it, it doesn't, like I don't have to be like a psychic or a prophet to like pretty much tell you that you're going to lose this one too. Why? Simply because of past patterns. I can make an educated guess, which they, they taught us to do in school. I can make an educated guess that you're going to lose. So then you're going to make your kids be out of school for this day and that day and that day and that day. And then they're just going to come back and nothing changed and you still have 30 students. So it's like, you're saying, oh, I can't get to all of my students. But now you're not getting to any of them. So before you were at least getting to some, let's say you had 30 students and each day you could only get to 20. Yes, that's not the best case scenario because there's still 10 who needed extra help that you couldn't give extra help to. But now you're getting to zero of them, zero of the 30 because school is not in session. So, oh, Jimmy needs a little bit of extra help. Now Jimmy is getting zero extra help because Jimmy isn't in school. So I don't understand because you're going to lose. If you happened to win and then the class size has got smaller, then yes, yay, you helped Jimmy. But the last three times that you striked, you didn't help Jimmy because school was canceled for weeks or months at a time. And then Jimmy came back and the class size was still too big. And then he missed five and a half weeks of school. Like, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Back when I was in grade 10 and school was out of session for five and a half weeks, we came back when there was like three weeks of school. So then they tried to cram the five and a half weeks that we missed plus the three weeks that we still had left into that three weeks. They tried to cram, tried being the operative word because they didn't succeed. They tried to cram eight and a half weeks of school into three weeks for all of your classes. So when you're in high school, or at least at my high school, if it's a, it was a semestered high school, so you have four classes this semester, four classes next semester. So this happened in second semester, right? So you have four classes and you're trying to cram eight and a half weeks of school into all four classes. 
Like what? You're not gonna do it. You can't keep up. It's impossible. So what teachers ended up doing was they made tests like a little easier or they didn't put everything on the test because they couldn't get through the curriculum because you can't teach eight and a half weeks of stuff in three weeks. So then what happened was it didn't really affect you that school year because your grade didn't really fluctuate because they realized, oh, the reason they're struggling is because I'm dumb and I decided to go on strike, right? So it's like, they're like, okay, I'm going to make this test easier. I don't want your grades to drop. I went on this strike because I wanted to help you. So I'm not going to make your grade go down. That sounds all good and dandy, right? Except when the next school year rolls around. So now me, I was in grade 11 and now I don't know the stuff that I needed to know for grade 11 because I didn't finish grade 10. I, I did on paper and it's like, oh, look, I got an A in grade 10 French. But then when I go to grade 11 French, I didn't learn all the words and conjugations and all this stuff that I was supposed to learn in grade 10. So now I can't do it in grade 11. So it's like my grade 10 mark didn't go down. But because we were trying to cram eight and a half weeks into three weeks, they didn't teach everything that I needed to be taught. So now I'm not prepared for grade 11. So you're saying, oh, Jimmy is slowly falling behind because I'm not able to get to him every day. Well, now Jimmy is five and a half weeks behind. Maybe before he was like, oh, I don't know my times tables yet or whatever. Jimmy is like a little kid in this situation in case I wasn't clear on that. So Jimmy is having trouble with his times tables, right? And Jimmy's in like the third grade. And so if you had dealt with him a little bit every single day for a short period of time because you can't spend too much time with each kid because there's too many kids, right? But if you had spent like five, 10 minutes every single day with Jimmy on his timetables, then when he got to grade four the next year, he'd, he'd, be, he'd be better at it. He might not be a pro, but he'd be better at it. But now Jimmy still doesn't know his timetables because Jimmy wasn't in school for five and a half weeks. And then when you came back with only three weeks left, well, now you didn't have time to teach him his timetables because you have the rest of the curriculum to get through. So did you help Jimmy? No, you didn't. No, you did not. So you see, if your strike had worked and the class sizes actually did get smaller, so then when school came back in session, you were able to spend more time with Jimmy, then yes, great. But that's not what happened. So it's like, if it works out, then it's great. But if it doesn't, then you're worse off than before the strike even happened. I'm not saying that schools can't be improved. Of course they can. But there has to be a better way to go about it. Because having kids not be in school is not the right way. You're saying, oh, I can't get to as many of my students as I would like. But now you're getting to none of them. So you're actually being counterproductive. Like, and this is coming from somebody who didn't particularly struggle in school. Like, I was a straight-A student throughout all of high school. So it's like, if I had struggles once I got to grade 11 because I didn't get to finish grade 10, then somebody who actually needed the extra help from grade 10 and then didn't get it and then still got put into grade 11 the next year, it must have been even worse for them. So if it was already hard for somebody who wasn't struggling, imagine how hard it was for somebody who actually was struggling. You're not helping that person. You're making it worse. I promise you, you're making it worse. You're not helping anybody at all, at all. You're helping 0% of people it's it's not working if you were to have one yes but the thing is you keep losing you 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 keep losing every single time and i'm sorry i hate to break it to you but you're probably gonna lose again and when you do i will refer you back to this video and say like oh remember in february like february 10th when i told you that you were gonna lose <laughs> see and so you're not helping little jimmy you're not helping little sheila you're not helping joan you're not helping joe you're not helping timothy you're not helping any of your students i'm telling you see see the thing is the teachers you have only experienced it from the teacher perspective I'm telling you what it's like from the student perspective in three different levels of education I experienced it in elementary school I experienced it in high school and I experienced it in university so I've experienced it in all levels of education and I'm telling you that you're not helping any of your students I'm telling you right now so go back to school go back to doing your job because you're not doing it right now I drove past my old high school the other day and they're just like walking around in front of the school in the freezing cold 
do you think that anybody cares? You're just freezing for no reason because you're gonna lose. When I was in grade 10, the strike ended up being ruled an illegal strike. And like, I don't know if it was actually illegal or if the government can just like say whatever they want, I don't know. But my point is they lost. That's the point. You're you're fighting against someone much bigger than you. And I'm not saying that, oh, they're already bigger than us. So, so, um, so there's no point in fighting because we're gonna lose. I'm not saying there's no point in fighting. I'm saying you have to find a different way of fighting. If you keep doing the same thing every single time and expecting a different result, that's stupid. I That's the, the definition of insanity. So it's like you keep going on strike and you keep losing and every single time you keep saying, we want smaller class sizes, we want smaller class sizes. Clearly, this is not the method to get smaller class sizes. They, like, getting a smaller class size and being able to actually help all of your students is important. But, but this is not the way to go about it because you've done it three times and you lost all three times, okay? And this is the fourth time and you're going to lose this time. And there's probably going to be another one a couple of years from now and you're going to lose that time. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you that if you keep striking, the government or whoever you're fighting against, they know how to handle strikes because that is how every person who wants something goes about it. So it's like they're already a pro at, shutting down your strikes because they've already done it a hundred times because everybody who wants something thinks oh let me go on strike you don't think they know how to combat strikes at this point because they they, they know how to make you lose because that's all you ever do you have to find a different way keep taking the kids out of school is not the way it hasn't worked for you in the past it's not going to work for you now and another thing that i've seen is that people have been blaming Doug Ford for this, and he's like the premier of Ontario, right? And mm, I am not for or against him, mainly because I don't watch the news, I don't know anything about politics, I made a whole video about that, right? So I can't be for or against any politician because I don't know what your values are, what you're proposing, what you're gonna do for the province, blah, blah, blah. I don't know because I don't listen to anything you say because I don't watch the news, right? But what I do know is that Doug Ford didn't become premier until 2018. All of the strikes that I was a part of were before 2018. I was in grade 8 in the 2013-2014 school year. Grade 10 was the 2013, no, the 2014-2015 school year. And my first year of university was the 2017-2018 school year. However, Doug Ford didn't become premier. He didn't get sworn in until June and the strike started in March. So you can't blame Doug Ford. You can't blame conservatives because the last people who were like in government, the last premier was liberal. So it's like, you can't say, oh, look what the conservatives did. Oh, look what Doug Ford did. You can't say that because back when you were striking the last three times, it was a completely different party in government and a completely different person leading that party. So you can't blame Doug Ford and you can't blame conservatives. So you're just trying to blame somebody. You're just trying to blame somebody at the top. And I'm not saying that he's a great politician or a bad politician. I don't know because I don't pay attention to Doug Ford. But what I do know is that this isn't new because you were fighting for the exact same thing back in 2013 and Doug Ford wasn't even in politics in 2013, let alone the premier so stop blaming Doug Ford because it ain't his fault because you've been fighting for the same thing since before he was premier so if you're gonna assign blame at least assign it to the right person because it ain't him like it, it, it couldn't be just him because you've been complaining about this since 2013 okay okay so if we're assigning blame at least assign it to the correct person Thank you. So once again, just to reiterate this, I have been through this three times. I have been through it as a student in three different levels of education. And I'm telling you, you're not helping the students. You're not. I am telling you as a student, as somebody who is still currently a student, and my university is prone to striking and apparently they strike like every three years. And so they strike we're on a strike in my first year and next year I'm going to be in my fourth year so then they're probably going to strike again okay and then school's going to be canceled for another few months and then they're they're going to lose again and then I'm going to have to catch up on all my classes in the summer and that's really annoying because sometimes you want to go to summer school to get more credits or maybe you want to graduate sooner like I actually planned to graduate in three years which meant I was going to go to summer school 
in like every single year and then I was going to graduate in three instead of four. But guess what? That's not happening anymore because my summer ended up being composed of my winter semester courses because the winter semester went into summer because school was canceled from March to July. So then we continued our March courses in July. So then we spent the whole summer making up for our winter semester courses, right? So it's like you're messing up people's plans for life. I had a friend who she was on a four-year plan to graduate and they moved her to a five-year plan. They, the administration did it. When she like logged into her account, it like automatically had her on a five-year education plan because they like, I guess they realized, oh, she missed too many weeks of school acting like she missed it and acting like school was in session and she just wasn't there or something. So, oh, she missed too many weeks of school, so it's going to take her five years to graduate. You push somebody a whole year back. Because the thing is, some courses are only available in certain semesters. So it's not like she could just retake that semester in fall of that same year, she would have to wait till winter of the next year. So let's say she was taking that class from January to April of 2017. She would have to wait till January of 2018 in order to take that class again because it wasn't gonna be offered in September of 2017. It's only offered in the winter. So she was actually a full year behind because that course is only offered a year from now, right? So it's like you're ruining kids. You think that you're helping them, but you're not. You're pushing them back. Some of them like can't graduate because they didn't get their grade because the class didn't finish. Some of them are going into their next year of school and they're not prepared because they didn't learn everything that they needed to learn in the previous year. You are not helping students. Stop going on strike. You have demands and they are reasonable. But the way that you're going about getting what you want is not reasonable at all. Stop doing it. Stop going on strike. Stop keeping the kids out of school. It is not fair. It is not fair to the kids. And it's not fair to the parents either because it's like, where where are they going to put their six-year-old? Like, parents have work. And now, like, typically their kid is at school when they're at work. And then when their kid is done school, they're done work, they pick up their kid and go home. But now they're at work and their kid is at home. Oh wait, you can't leave a six-year-old at home by themselves, so now you either have to leave them at a relative or at daycare or at a babysitter, and two of those three things cost money, okay? You're affecting so many people. You're you're not just, firstly, you're affecting yourself because you're walking around in front of your school in the, when it's negative 10 degrees, that's ridiculous, okay? So you're affecting yourself. You're affecting parents because now they have to, like, they have to find somebody to take care of their child and you're affecting the children because they're not getting educated and it's ironic because the reason why you're striking is because they're not getting educated to their fullest potential but now they're not getting educated at all because they're not in school you're you are not helping the children i'm telling you this from first-hand experience three separate times in three different levels of education elementary school high school university you're not helping any of the levels of education. You're not helping any of the students. I have never heard one student ever say anything positive about a strike, ever. So stop it, you are not helping the students. And maybe your heart is in the right place and you genuinely think that you're helping, but you're not. I am telling you that you're not. So go back and do your job. So yeah, that's all for this week's video. Um. I feel very passionately about this because as I've already said like 14 times in this video, <laughs> I have been a part of this three times. And as I said, my school is prone to striking, so they're probably gonna strike next year. So it's gonna be a fourth time and it's gonna set me back another year or another semester or whatever. And it's annoying and especially when you're in university and you're paying for classes and then you don't even get to finish the class. Like it's it's so annoying and it's so it's not helping i'm telling you i'm not asking i'm telling it's not helping so stop striking so that's all for this week's video i hope you enjoyed it or i hope you learned something i hope you're a teacher and i hope you're watching this and i hope you share this to other teachers you might not agree with what i had to say but it is the truth it's my truth, at least. This is from my perspective. This is also from the perspective of, of a lot of friends that I have and a lot of students that I've spoken to in general. And 
this you are hearing the voice of the students and if you don't like that i don't you can't you don't have to like my opinion but that doesn't mean it's not true so yeah i hope you learned something i hope you saw something from a different perspective if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up if you think your friends will enjoy it or if you there's someone who you know who needs to see this be sure to share it with them all my social media links will be down below in case you want to follow me on there be sure to subscribe to my channel because i make new videos every monday and i'll see you next monday with a new video